when trying to showcase tremendous speed, a lot of it has to do with breaking down the sprint. Breaking down the sprint in uh, regards to hip flexion, hip extension, single leg strength, all these things can really make an athlete become explosive and powerful with every step they take just shown right here as well. So what we're going to do is we're gonna talk about how to train your sprint without sprinting. Welcome to harvestingstrength.com. Hey guys, welcome to harvestingstrength.com. Right now what we're gonna do is a new series on training your sprint without sprinting. We did a series before uh, where the videos were about training strongman without, uh, without actually doing strongman. It was kind of a phase to where COVID had just uh, occurred and we were limited on resources. And it just became an opportunity for us to kind of uh, exploit the situation, not in a bad way, but just to kind of think of how can we allow this competitor, uh, Spencer, to be successful in his events if he didn't really have access to traditional uh, tools and equipment. but. What, what happened within that concept was we were able to break down the sport, the physiology of the sport, and mimic it through traditional barbell and strength components. And that's what we're doing here with this, the sprinting work. We're talking about increasing your sprints without traditionally sprinting. So we're not talking about going to the track and practicing that way. We're talking about you know things like uh, strength, power, explosiveness, uh, specificity when it comes to exercise selection, and just really allowing a sprinter to just grow in their ability. Um, some of the best uh, coaches I've met and have uh, observed with their uh, their sprinting mechanics or their ability are when they uh, you know are into their ped uh, pedagogical practices with it. Is um, they don't really have the the people sprinting a lot, and they don't have them spending the whole time on the track. They're actually working different exercises, different activities that can make them more dynamic and be better. So. We're gonna break this series down into uh, three videos. The first one's gonna be a strength video, uh, which is this one. Uh, a power video, taking strength and including power. So now we're talking about traditional Olympic lifts and then specificity, uh, specific exercise selection that'll transfer over to the sprint. Uh, with strength, we really need it because when you break down the whole component of speed, we're talking about taking someone's stride and the minute they touch the ground, how to redirect that stride. <clears throat> and how that works is through various contractions. You know, when we, we, when we load the body, uh, when we take that step, we take that step, we're loading the body, we're taking in the resistance. That's the stretching phase. So the muscle's starting to stretch, but we need it to contract to regenerate movement. And that gap in between stretching and shortening, uh, that reaction time, that reactive ability is called amortization. How do we go from stretching, boom, right back into uh, that concentric phase. Uh, so the stretch shortening cycle is gonna be a really uh, important component that we're trying to work with uh, and get better at through strength. So let's watch this video. Let's see the progression of lifts from you know squat, front squat, RDL, touchless RDLs, single leg RDLs, uh, band resisted hip flexion. We're taking all the components of uh, sprint work getting stronger so that our musculature can be ready for more dynamic ability in the future. Uh, thank you guys for all your feedback and everything that um, you know, you've know you helped us with to, to this point. And uh, let's go ahead and start talking about the sprinting mechanics and how we can strengthen those sp sprinting mechanics with the basic principles of uh, strength and lifting. All right, so right here we have the barbell squat. The biggest thing about the barbell squat is just development of the leg muscles, especially the hips, uh, the quadriceps, and the hamstrings. They have a role to play in all this, but nonetheless, just developing that motion of dropping the hips and redirecting the movement just to get ourselves ready for future power movements and explosive tendencies with things like plyometrics and the Olympic lifting. Uh, it's just the foundational uh, movement of everything we do. Now the front squat, what's nice is you displace the weight in the front, so there could be more development on the quadriceps, uh, better uh, movement programming of the hips, so you kind of counterbalance the weight and can be more successful. But again, it just displaces the weight differently, so you can have variety with the programming and depending on you know the sprint work and the mechanics and what event you do, perhaps in track and field, it can translate differently. Now the box squats, I like that because whenever you sit on the box, the first thing that needs to work is the hips. So you sit on the box 
And of course you can rock into the motion, but for the most part, there's a heavy emphasis on hip extension. And I think that's something that could lack in some of your athletes where maybe they squat, but the first thing they do is uh, extend the knees. And uh, this is just to help prioritize that hip dominant uh, strength development. Now, deadlifts, okay? I know a lot of people think, oh, deadlifting, that must be for a power lifter or a strong man. Uh, deadlifting is just as it sounds. You're lifting dead weight off the ground. And what you're doing is you're lifting from a quarter squat position and having to generate movement uh, from, uh, from a motionless uh, position. So the fact that the bar is on the ground and then you have to lift it is just another way to trigger uh, growth and development of the hip muscle uh, without getting that nice stretch reflex of when you squat and you get to descend with the bar. Now RDLs, okay, are more about not just vertical hip extension, but more so horizontal hip extension. So the weight's on the ground, you push your hips forward, and now you can really work on the uh, hamstrings and the glutes, uh, the hips basically. And um, we can also offer a different variation where the RDLs are touchless, and that'll keep the lower body, uh, the hips, and the hamstrings tight throughout the movement so that we can uh, work on tearing the body apart a little bit more and maybe get more growth and development. That could be something great for like an off-season program. Now, single leg RDL. Again, we can go from resting to touchless. This is just becoming more specific to the, the sprinting mechanics because when we run, we run at one leg at a time. And if we can physiologically mimic those characteristics of running, we can be better off with our strength and our development in that sense. So we go from you know resting to touchless and uh, it works out really well. In this touchless motion right here, the hips stay strong. So that could kind of work whenever you're uh, you know, doing your sprint work or your stride. Uh, like let's say you, you take that step in your stride and you need to redirect that tension. This movement keeps tension the whole way through. So again, touchless or when you rest, just tries to physiologically uh, challenge the lifter in different ways. Now barbell hip extension. This is just going to isolate the hip muscles, the glute muscles, mostly the, glute, uh, the gluteus maximus. And uh, it's nice because there are or there is horizontal resistance. So we can really focus on extending the hips. And if you do not have powerful hip extension with your movement, you will probably be a very bad athlete. Now the step ups, again, we're uh, not really isolating in a sense, but a little bit more specificity with this movement to where we mimic the sprinting and mechanics, especially near the end of that movement right there, a little bit more growth and development of the single leg uh, development. And then band resisted knee raises. Uh, whenever we do this motion, the resistance is on the toes. So we're really working on, uh, what's it? Getting good knee flexion, uh, getting good toe placement, and not just working the hip flexors, uh, you know, the iliopsoas, uh, but we're also working on that anterior tibialis, strengthening that, strengthening that muscle in the front that tends to get achy and hurts whenever we uh, think we have this so-called shin splint. Um, strengthening that muscle can help a ton. And then right here, horizontal band hip extension. This is just like the barbell hip extension we saw, but now we are standing upward and we're applying force uh, in that standing motion. So again, that could probably transfer just a little bit more, uh, you know, to people who are uh, athletes that are upright and need to have, you know, that physiological paralleling of, uh, of activity and sport. So take all this into consideration. If you have more questions, uh, you know, contact me at harvestingstrength.com. Appreciate all the feedback. Appreciate everybody who's following us. Subscribe to our channel. Um, check out, you know, for the latest developments on the website for merchandise, literature, blo uh, blogs, and posts. And, uh, you know, let's just grow. Uh, knowledge is a key, and knowledge is going to be helping us, is going to help us be more successful with our sports and our clients.